Let us see one more concept called enumeration machine. I can say it is one more variation of Turing machines also known as enumerator. Let me define that. So like Turing machine you have some semi infinite tape but initially so there will be left hand marker followed by all blank symbols that means sir no input yes. So here enumeration machine won't take any input because it is not that kind of machine which takes input. Second thing you will be having you know sigma and tau where sigma is output alphabet which is used to output some symbols and tape alphabet is tau like we have input alphabet and tape alphabet in Turing machine apart from that everything is same. So your Turing machine generally will have finite control right that means it will have some code similarly here also this enumeration machine is also going to have finite control that means it is going to have a code followed by set of states everything. Now let's say your Turing machine is starting always generally your Turing machine starts like this right here also uh, this enumeration machine starts at left hand marker okay at some start state s and one more thing generally Turing machine uh, will have final state and reject state right but here there is no final state reject state so then how this enumeration machine accepts it is not a kind of acceptance machine it is going to generate strings so your Turing machine accepts input if this enumeration machine generates input output okay that is the difference now I will explain how this enumeration machine is going to work in initially in the early morning your enumeration machine starts at s some start state okay after that by seeing the finite control it will have some list of code right based on the code it will manipulate some of the tape symbols okay a b something in that way depends on the code then occasionally it will write something on output tape like this a b b a okay so in that way then eventually after some point of time it will come to a special state called enumerated state so when it comes to enumerated state that means we should understand that one string is generated by this Turing machine sorry enumeration machine so we have to immediately note it down I'm just telling I mean so I'm just kidding so after some time so this once this string is generated for uh, you know after some point of time it will be erased automatically that means once string is generated after some fraction of seconds let's say this tape will be emptied again that means it will be erased all the content will be erased then this tape will start again from fresh now your generator or enumeration machine will go to again start state and it will do whatever you know it will otherwise it will continue its process okay so after that again your enumeration machine will write some input here a b b b b a b something then it will go to again enumerated state when it comes to enumerated state again that means that we should understand that enumeration machine again output one more string so that means your enumeration machine generated one more output in that way so once it is done again it will be erased then your enumeration machine will continue the process and one more thing you remember once it comes to enumerated state then once output is generated it will go to start state again then it will continue the process okay so this is called enumeration machine so this enumeration machine is going to generate the strings correct so it will be if there is is there any end no there is no end it will be continuously generating the strings now let me define this enumeration machine formally enumeration machine is represented like this it is going to generate a language generate Turing machine accepts a language this enumeration machine is going to generate a language the language generated by example let's say this machine is G the language uh, I mean the strings which are generated by this enumeration machine is called language of G okay generally language of Turing machine is nothing but strings accepted by Turing machine here language of this enumeration machine is nothing but strings generated by this enumeration machine sir uh, we have a question what is that this enumeration machine uh, let's say generates a language is it equivalent to some Turing machines accepted language yes so there is a equivalence whatever this enumeration machine generates 
we can have a Turing machine such a way that the Turing machine accepts them. Second thing, if you have a Turing machine which accepts a language, let's say this is a language accepted by Turing machine, then definitely there will be one generator, otherwise gen, uh, enumeration machine which is going to generate them. Okay, there is a one to one correspondence. That means set of generators are equivalent to set of Turing machines, I can say. Otherwise, for every Turing machine, there will be an enumeration machine. For every enumeration machine, there is a Turing machine. So, Turing machines and enumeration machines are equivalent with respect to expressive power. If a language is accepted by Turing machine, then the same language can be generated by your generator. And if a generator generates any language, then we can design a Turing machine which can accept this, um, I mean, which can accept the same language. Understand? So, that is one thing you should remember. Finally, uh, generators otherwise enumerators equivalent to Turing machines okay now we'll see one interesting story which is related to enumerators so uh, already we know that Turing machines are equivalent to generators or enumerators right uh, so we are going to prove you know one of the aspect that means uh, I'm going to prove that for every Turing machine we can have a generator which is equivalent to that okay I'm going to explain that with this story assume that let's say Raju is a Turing machine okay so he is accepting some language let's call it as zero star something so language of raju is zero star just for our imagination so uh, then the problem is raju is so arrogant and he is claiming that uh, i have a complicated turing machine and in the world there is no generator for it but we know that for every turing machine there is a generator but raju is not accepting what we have to do is we have to teach him a lesson and we have to prove that for Raju's Turing machine also there is a generator okay now remember one thing what is the uh, similarities between generator and Turing machine Turing machine can if you can write a code in Turing machine like you know Q on A something Q1 comma B comma right then same thing we can do in enumerator also the only difference what is the difference between Turing machine and uh, enumerator enumerator cannot take the input okay apart from that and enumerator generally cannot have final state and reject state then how it is going to generate we will see apart from that coding part if you see the code like you know transition function we have in Turing machine in generator also we have transition function everything is there other than remember one thing what we don't have is input what we don't have is final state and reject state apart from that everything is same and what we have Turing machine doesn't have is Turing machine generally whenever input is given it accepts it correct but enumerator it won't take input but it can generate that uh, you know strings in a uh, separate uh, state called uh, sorry separate um, tape called uh, output tape and it is going to at that time enumerated state that means I can say your enumerator has an enumerated state and Turing machine has final state okay in that way these two are having the similarities now we are going to generate a enumerator for this Turing machine Raju says that there is no enumerator right I am going to show that simple what you do is so this enumerator uh, we are going to build we know that enumerator generally contains two tapes correct one is working tape on which we are going to do the processing this output tape is to generate all possible strings right so we are going to use this output tape only to output it's like a computer screen we use it for uh, outputting something let's begin what we do is we copy Raju's Turing machine code okay through already I told you through finite control we can copy one you know we can remember the code of another Turing machine did you remember already I told you you have a Turing machine one you have Turing machine 2 then Turing machine 2 can be designed such a way that it can remember Turing machine one's code in its finite control right so already I told you and if you have any questions please ask me so then I can explain you through the forum okay now so with that capacity or capability so your generator is a, like a Turing machine right so it is going to first what it is going to do in the high level I will tell you on its working tape Raju's Turing machine code will be copied okay assume like that so Raju's Turing machine code we copy here and here uh, but what sir we don't take input right then how you accept anything I will tell you 
so for that we are going to generate first all possible strings in the world example let's say input alphabet is sigma is 0 1 the, for Raju example let's say Raju said I accept 0 star but for that we don't have input right first I write all possible inputs epsilon 0 1 0 0 to differentiate correctly so what we are going to do is we are going to keep hash in between them okay assume that hash is also one of the possible symbol on our tape alphabet so first epsilon then hash 0 hash 1 hash so these are the possible strings in the world 0 0 hash 0 1 in that way now what is our job is we simulate this Turing machine code whose Turing machine code is this one Raju's Turing machine code on this input epsilon will ask my dear Raju if I run you on epsilon will you accept it then Raju's Turing machine code will be because it's a copy paste thing right then it has to be uh, run and when Raju's Turing machine code is simulated then epsilon let's say is because definitely Raju is going to accept epsilon then we are going to print that on output epsilon then after that we will go to zero we ask Raju's Turing machine code indirectly we are using Raju's Turing machine code only then exactly so Raju accepts zero then we output zero in that way finally all that strings of zero star can be outputted right so finally I can say that for this Turing machine there is a generator exactly whatever it is accepting we can generate but there is a major flaw in method this method of course we can do it but the method whatever I taught you it has some small mistake what is that I will tell you example let's say Raju's Turing machine is little bit tricky Turing machine what it is doing is we'll see first of all I ask on epsilon my dear Raju's Turing machine code please run on epsilon and tell me the answer do you accept then Raju's Turing machine code let's say went to final state then we output it right perfect so up to now we did correct now after epsilon so what is the next thing we are going to output we are going to take zero on zero we are running when you run on zero then definitely since zero is part of Raju's Turing machine that means accept uh, accepted language so definitely this Raju's Turing machine code is going to halt because it has to accept and it will accept because it will not go to infinite loop agree then after finite amount of time zero will be accepted by your Raju's Turing machine code hence your generator is going to generate such a way I'm planning the generator okay so if you have any questions about generators or why generator is doing like this only to I, I mean accept exactly like Raju that means uh, to generate the, all the strings which are accepted by Raju after that you know complication comes one then your generator is going to take one and it is going to simulate Raju's Turing machine now did you remember the generally Turing machines property whenever you give invalid input that means an input which is not part of the language which this Turing machine accepting example Raju's Turing machine is accepting zero star for that we have created a Turing machine that may not be total Turing machine what on input 1 if this Turing machine goes to infinite loop such a way let's say Raju planned it then really if you run your Raju's Turing machine on 1 then you will be in loop sir whenever we realize that we are in loop then we terminate but that is a problem we never know that we are in loop because there is no difference between simple running and loop right so infinite loop cannot be detected we always think that still you know your Turing machine is working on the input correct properly so that's why we can at any point of time we can't say whether one is accepted by Raju or not now we'll ask Raju Raju do you accept one let's say he's a little bit this kind of Turing machine right Raju says I don't know I'm running don't ask me it is too early to say that okay ask after five hours after five hours ask Raju Raju I am simulating you on input one tell me do you halt do you go to final state I don't know anything but uh, since five hours I am working maybe there is a progress so after five hours if you ask it is too early for me ask after some time let's say you waited for ten hours then after ten hours you asked my dear Raju do you accept one currently I did not accept currently I did not go to reject state also try to understand that means I am looping but if you assume that it is infinite loop then I can't do anything because that may not be infinite loop okay so in that way always Raju can postpone what I want to say is 
so if really uh, after um, two days still let's say Raju is looping then if you assume that Raju has infinite loop you may be doing mistake why let's say after two days you declared that that means only for two days you simulated Raju steering machine on one after that you dis declared that Raju is in infinite loop and you rejected the string but what can happen after two days there is a chance I am telling so Raju can claim like this why why did you stop me after two days actually after three days only I can accept that input but after two days you simply rejected that means after two days you simply said that I can't accept that is wrong in that way so whenever you terminate the Turing machine so you may get you know contradictory uh, things correct that is a problem sir I do one thing I wait for 50 years on some input I ask Raju me my dear Raju you accept one or not then after 50 years still that Raju is let's say in loop then I declare it as infinite loop you are wrong again maybe after 60 years he may halt who knows that's why can you say it 50 years after 50 years that Raju uh, accepted something or rejected something no so that's why what I want to say is really at any point of time Raju accepts Raju goes to final state we can say that Raju accepts it at any point of time Raju goes to reject state then you can say Raju rejected it but by uh, not going to final state t and by not going to reject state let's say Raju is in some intermediate state let's call i and now time is 50 years he ran for 50 years then still I can't say anything you should don't say it is infinite loop may not be infinite loop don't say he will accept may not he may not accept don't say he will reject he may not reject he may accept anything can happen so that is one thing sir then what should I do since 10 years I am running this Raju's code I, I lot to I mean so many strings I have to accept still there are infinite strings now there is I am afraid that you know I am in infinite loop yes that is that is a problem so you are in a trap now no one knows whether it is an infinite loop or not this is your generator situation it is looping but we can't say it is loop because I already explained that example right so one year two years three years four years after four years we can't say after five years we can't say after thousand years we can't say maybe for some inputs your Turing machine takes two thousand years and it gives output who knows that's why so we cannot say that your Turing machine is looping that's the problem that's why you know Raju is laughing you see correct so how to generate a generator which can but we should uh, because really you are a generator for this Turing machine if you are in infinite loop let's say really one uh, on one I am just telling possibility on one let's say Raju's Turing machine really goes to infinite loop then is it not mistake from Raju's side sir no because Raju said he accepts zero star for every input of his language that means zero 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 epsilon triple zero definitely he will accept he will not go to infinite loop but for other inputs like one he has to reject for such inputs he may reject it otherwise he may go to infinite loop so that is a property of a Turing machine okay so you tell me what to do the only thing what we can do is effectively enumerating okay so that is called effective enumeration finally our problem is really you want to prove that for Raju's Turing machine we have a enumerator then we should not struck on one input correct but we don't know what input uh, is the right input correct so we don't know maybe there are some inputs which are not accepted by Raju but we don't know without running them so sir which input we should not consider no it's not like that correct so on every input there is a danger so what we are going to have is effective enumeration we will see how to effectively enumerate such a way that we can have an equivalent Turing machine okay let me tell you that so what we do here is we design in a different way rather than you know traditional way so the idea is first of all as it is we generate all possible strings epsilon okay so this is your enumerator enumerator will have working tape on working tape imagine multiple tracks for our convenience so on one track first there will be a Turing machine code let's call this is Turing machine Raju's code and this is all possible strings epsilon 
and 0 hash 1 and 0 0 so on okay so rather than running linearly how we run is we run in a clever way that means using round robin league in operating system we will be learning in process scheduling so we can schedule the you know inputs in a round robin league way okay some amount of time otherwise also known as time sharing we give some time to epsilon in within that time limit if it is not accepted by raju's code it doesn't mean that it rejects but we postpone the decision that means we don't run uh, epsilon and raju's turing machine we will go to zero after that after some point of time we'll go to one in that way i will tell you the technique in a pictorial representation well you understand the idea but you don't know what is the order we have to run our inputs so that we can effectively enumerate all the strings which are generated by or which are accepted by raju for that what we can do is so let's say these are all your inputs epsilon 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 rather than you know looping on particular input we don't give that chance to you know that uh, code what we do is we run let's say one step epsilon one step then we run one step epsilon second time one step zero try to understand so that means first step on epsilon second step on epsilon third step on zero next time the fourth step will be again you know here one step here one step here one step here now can i say one thing one two three four five you know six after sixth step that means at sixth step this got chance right similarly sir when zero zero gets chance so zero zero gets chance at this step see after that again we'll come back and we give one step here one step here one step here one step here so try to understand the procedure first step is for epsilon second step is for epsilon third step is for zero then uh, fourth step fifth step sixth step for epsilon zero one then uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 steps for these four inputs then again come back and give one unit one unit one unit one unit one unit to first five inputs then give next steps to first six inputs in that way every time there is a progress so sixth input also getting chance eventually correct so if you follow this process then everyone gets you know time to be executed correct so there is no danger of infinite loop why we go to infinite loop we never goes to infinite loop right eventually now let me repeat the process like this give chance step one step two step three step four step five step six okay then step seven step eight step nine step ten now 11 12 13 14 15 then 16th step onwards this time for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inputs. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Next. 21, 22, 23, 24th step, 25th step, 26th step, 27th step. In that way. So we are covering all the inputs. So on no input we are looping. Then eventually, really example, it says 0, 0 takes only 50 steps. Then we will be giving, uh, you know, this 0, 0, 50 steps. In the next iteration, it will get one more step in next iteration it is going to get one more step in that way so finally we are going to cover every input and uh, i mean any number of steps right finally sir example let's say one zero requires one crore steps then only you know that can be accepted are you going to give yes definitely this method if you follow because in the next iteration again we are uh, covering this one zero one more time next step one more time in that way rather than giving a particularly for one input all the time we are covering round robin leg so that eventually after some time maybe there is a delay but definitely so that is not infinite delay after some time one zero is going to get one crore steps eventually so really it is a part of uh, this turing machine really raju accepts it then after one crore steps he will accept it then we generate it that's why there is no string which is accepted by raju which is not generated by us correct definitely example sir there is a string called 001 raju accepts because on 001 we are simulating raju's turing machine correct how many steps any number of steps also if it takes five crore steps we are running five crore steps but not in a one stretch i can say in interleaving way so 
definitely every string will be generated here effectively we are getting chance now sir there is input one on which let's say really turing machine goes to infinite loop then here also we are going to infinite loop right but we are not striking correct we are definitely having progress and we are definitely generating the strings which are accepted by raju but for other inputs still we are looping that's why so this is called effective enumeration right but remember one thing one important property of this one is remember whenever there is a recursively enumerable language let me tell you clearly turing machine generally accepts a language called recursively enumerable correct so whenever you have a recursively enumerable language but not recursive for that there is no total turing machine possible correct for such kind of languages then what is not guaranteed is generally so the odd i mean the generator cannot generate elements in a particular order that means so in simple words i will tell you like this Ra there is a rajus turing machine and it is accepting the language let's call recursively enumerable language so whenever you have a recursively enumerable language for that we cannot have a generator which generates strings in a lexicographic order that might not be possible sometimes it may be possible sometimes might not be why sir example see this one we definitely need an effective procedure correct we can't run first epsilon after that zero after that one correct we have to give in a we have to run in a time sharing manner when you run in time sharing manner assume that let's say zero takes five steps on this turing machine but uh, you know zero zero takes only one step then which one will be generated first 0 0 that means are we generating in this order epsilon then 0 then 0 0 no we are generating in a random order correct depends on the number of steps that takes but remember one thing really you have let's say recursive language then for such kind of uh, languages we can have a enumerator which can print in a lexicographic order we will see that but remember two things now you have a recursively enumerable language for that effective enumeration is possible that means we are effectively enumerating we can enumerate all but lexicographic order cannot be guaranteed because you know we don't know which uh, string is taking less number of steps which string takes more number of steps example one string takes only five steps that will be quickly printed though it is not in the order correct so lexicographic order means so printing epsilon first then zero plus uh, then zero zero i'm talking about raju turing machine example let's say zero star is one language printing the strings in lexicographic order means epsilon then zero then zero zero then triple zero so on but in this technique really if you use this technique sometimes we need it also to avoid the infinite loop then in that model so i may not you know generate the strings in this order sometimes what can happen if your turing machine is uh, designed such a way that epsilon takes 100 steps zero takes only one step then eventually zero will be printed first because it will finish its task first after that epsilon it is like you know process scheduling operating system you have shortest job and you know longest job so in round robin league fashion if you execute who will be uh, complete uh, who will be completing his job first shortest job in the same way here also these are all like jobs so whose job will be completed first which takes less number of uh, steps on turing machine okay so that is about enumerators and recursively enumerable languages now let's summarize sir i have a recursively enumerable language that means i have a turing machine for a language so for such language i would like to have a generator which prints the strings in a lexicographic order is it possible always no always it may not be possible sir when it is possible when can you guarantee please tell me i can guarantee that means i'm just talking about guarantee okay i can give you guarantee if your turing machine is total turing machine that means the language is recursive for recursive language i can have a generator which can uh, enumerate the things in a lexicographic order sir why it is possible i will tell you very easy see this language which is recursive for that we have a total turing machine okay remember it for such language we can enumerate the strings that means we can create an enumerator for this uh, turing machine which can uh, generate the strings in lexicographic order how you see first step what we do is we directly simulate epsilon first okay 
now i am going to create a generator that generator will simulate this let's say this is you know rani turing machine so rani turing machine is total turing machine which is for this recursive language then first of all rani turing machine will be simulated on epsilon using this generator okay so generator is simulating rani on epsilon so eventually no time sharing now the complete you know it is like giving complete uh, time to epsilon first so eventually since this property of you know one thing right whenever it is a recursive uh, language then we can generate a total during machine i assume that let's say rani's machine is total during machine here sometimes people do mistake whenever there is a recursive language then total turing machine design is possible it doesn't mean that whatever the way you design a turing machine that will turn out as i mean total turing machine is wrong okay example let's say there is a turing machine for zero star zero star is recursive language because every re regular language is recursive we know that right so for that also we can create a turing machine which can loop what you do is intentionally you create write a code such a way that if it is a right input accept it and whenever you know that it is wrong input since you know that rather than rejecting intentionally go to loop yeah such a way we can design that means for every re uh, recursive language also there can be a uh, ordinary turing machine that means so we can design which is not total turing machine but here what i am going to do is so whenever you have a recursive language first of all i construct a total turing machine because i can construct a total turing machine correct if i carefully plan it after that now come to generator what generator is going to do is so it is going to simulate that rani turing machine which is total turing machine on epsilon since that is total turing machine if epsilon is part of that language it will accept whenever it accepts then this generator is going to generate it let's say this is output tape on output it generates after that it will take the next input zero and simulate rani turing machine so either accepts or rejects if it rejects then don't uh, i mean output it go to another string 0 1 sorry after 0 1 right okay and simulate uh, rani turing machine on 1 then one accepts i mean one is accepted by rani then you print it in that way in lexicographic order we can print then some student asks sir you did not print 0 why first if it really it is a lexicographic order then you have to print 0 first right 0 is rejected i mean we have to print only strings which are accepted by language otherwise you know why we have to simulate then directly we can print all the strings it's not like that the question is we have to print all the strings of the language otherwise all the strings accepted by the turing machine in a lexicographic order it is possible there is no danger of falling in loop because if we have a total turing machine already on that there is a there is no loop so there is no infinite waiting so happily we can go with one input at a time but if it is recursively just you know if you have simple turing machine not total then there is a chance that there is an infinite loop then don't use this procedure already i told you for that we have to use effective enumeration finally let's summarize if you have a recursive language then we can have a generator we can have it means all generators won't do this okay we can design a generator which can print the strings in alphabetical order or lexicographic order second thing if you have just recursively enumerable language but we don't know whether it is recursive or not for such kind of recursively enumerable language there may be total turing machine may not be if there is no total turing machine possible for such recursively enumerable language then effect i mean we cannot uh, enumerate the strings in lexicographic order because when you try to you know li list out all the all of them in uh, lexicographic order there is a danger that you will be in a loop for that only technique is time sharing in time sharing we cannot uh, guarantee that they will be printed in lexicographic order because they will be printed based on the number of steps they are taking to get acceptance otherwise rejectance understand so this is about effective enumeration and generators and turing machines now final line so recursive languages are definitely can be enumerated in a lexicographic order and recursively enumerable languages are effectively enumerated but may not be guaranteed lexicographic order that is very important point you have to remember right